If you like working on your own bikes like I do, you should consider learning how to build your own wheels and here in this video I'm gonna show you 5 good reasons to do so. And stay until the end of the video where I'm gonna give you 3 very useful tips for starting your own bicycle wheel builds. The choices. It gives you freedom of choice. The obvious is when you want to customize your bike by putting a hub of a certain color or something like that. But sometimes you might want a combination of components for a specific use and you just don't find it pre-made. Let's say that you are building a touring bike and you want a super strong wheel with 36 spokes and double eyelets on the rim and you want to combine that with a reliable dynamo hub. Also, for some wheel sizes, the offer of pre-made wheels is quite limited, like for the 20 inches wheel of my Omnium Cargo or the 26 inches wheels of a traditional touring bike, or even for the 650B wheels that I'm building right now, when you want to combine that with an internal gear hub like the Roloff or a Dynamo hub, the offer of pre-made wheels can be limiting and building your own wheels can be a great solution. Repairability. If you can make it, you can repair it. If you are on a trip and you have a broken spoke, for example, you are going to be more confident to repair it yourself. Also, you are going to pay more attention to the condition of your wheels, you'll be able to check the spoke tension with your own hands and detect wobbles with a quick look. That will prevent you from having technical problems during your rides. Money saving. By building your own wheels, you can save money in three ways. The best way of saving money is by reusing material. For example, for building the rear wheel of my Omnium Cargo, I was able to reuse this old rim that was still in very good condition. I only had to buy the spokes and the hub. For this wheel set that I'm building right now, I took these two hubs that I had on another wheel set that I wasn't using anymore. The wheel set was 700C and for this new bike I needed 650B wheels, so I just had to buy new rims and spokes. A second way of saving money is by checking, doing the maintenance and repairing your wheels yourself. As I mentioned before, if you know how to build it, you know how to repair it. But also you know how to detect problems at an early stage and prevent damage on the components. Another way is by choosing standards that are more low-tech. When we were building the Ricci Ascent, all the wheels available at the moment had a Shimano Micro Spline Hub the new standard for many 11 and 12 speed cassettes. We wanted to stay on 9 speed HG cassettes standard that is much cheaper. We were able to get this combo by building the wheels ourselves. The price of the wheels was the same as buying them, but we saved indirectly by buying the much cheaper HG 9 speed cassette quality. Entry level wheels are made by machines and sometimes they are not properly put in tension which can cause technical problems after a few hundred kilometers of use. I find it normal to sometimes use entry level components to keep the price low on a particular project. If you build a wheel with entry level components you'll get much better results if you build the wheels yourself. Wheels that are built correctly will help you get the most of your components. Satisfaction. Building your own wheels can give you a lot of satisfaction, especially if you like working with your hands. At first, you'll need some patience to go through the process in a methodical way, paying attention to every detail at every step, but after a few builds, the process becomes more natural and you'll flow through it more easily and at that point it becomes much more enjoyable in my opinion. Are you starting to feel motivated about wheel building? Well, here you have three bonus tips to get you started. True stand. At some point during the build you're gonna need a base to work on the spoke tension and alignment. The bike itself can work and you can add marks to be able to center the wheel properly. 
You can also build your own train stand. Just Google DIY wheel train stand and you'll see there are many sources and tutorials. For the first couple of builds, I strongly recommend you to go to a community bike shop. Many cities have bike community repair shops where you can work for free or for a small fee. And also, you can get to know people and get some good advice. At some point, you might want to invest and buy a train stand for yourself. You can get one for as cheap as 50 euros, but if you really like wheel building and you are building wheels for your friends and family like I do, why not investing on a professional drawing stand like this one? This is a Park Tool TS 2.2 and I paid 260 euros for it in 2020. The spokes. The spokes are kind of the soul of the wheel, so it's important to work with the right level of quality according to the level of quality of the components and the use you are gonna give to the wheels. For entry level wheels, when I'm really trying to get the wheel on a low budget, I use Sapim zinc spokes. They are galvanized steel spokes and they are very cheap. You can get them for 20 to 30 cents per spoke and they are surprisingly good. I built a touring wheel about five years ago with these spokes and after heavy use the wheel is still in very good condition. If you want something a bit better and more weatherproof you can get the leader spokes which are stainless steel and you can get them for about 50 cents per spoke. For a bike like my Surly Bridge Club, which is an off-road touring bike, I prefer to use something a bit stronger, like the double-butted Sapim race spokes. Double-butted means they are thinner in the middle section and thicker at the ends. Double-butted spokes are stronger than normal spokes for two reasons. First, the stretching process in the middle section make them at least 48% stronger as they explain here on their website. And second, the middle part also becomes better at absorbing shocks, which protects the ends of the spokes spokes that are usually the parts that break more easily. So when the spoke is under stress, the middle part is going to take the so-called elastic deformation or temporary deformation instead of the ends that are more fragile. Double butted spokes are also a tiny bit lighter than normal ones, but that doesn't really make a big difference in my opinion. These spokes cost about one euro each technical information. If you are motivated to start building your first set of wheels, you won't have any trouble finding a free tutorial on the internet. On YouTube, there are many well-made tutorials that can guide you step by step through the building process. But if you want a deeper understanding on how bicycle wheels work, and get your skills to a professional level, I highly recommend you this ebook made by Roger Mason. You can also visit Sheldon Brown's amazing website or one of the classics, The Bicycle Wheel by Jobs Brand. I'm putting the links in the description. All right, you made it till the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching, liking and subscribing. I'm Francisco from Bicycle Picnic and see you next time.